Hello everyone, Hyper here, and in today's video, I am going to be ranking all the melee DPS when it comes to raiding in the Shadowlands. I will talk a little bit about Mythic Plus as well, but the main focus of the video is on raiding. So if you've decided to be a melee DPS moving into the next expansion, either you're continuing to be one or you're re-rolling to one, hopefully this it gives you a little idea of how each of the specs is performing. So if you're still a little indecisive about uh, what to pick, then this should help you out. Before we get started with the video, here's a quick word from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. You probably already know this, but Raid has over 500 champions to pick from and tons of customization options. So it doesn't matter if you enjoy playing the Noble High Elves and the Sacred Order, or the Dark Demon Spawn and Undead Hordes, there's something for you. With 16 different factions to choose from, you're sure to find a champion that you like. Use the links below to download Raid on your mobile device or PC while I tell you more about the game. One of my favorite champions so far has been Kyle, who is one of the starting champions. He belongs to the Dark Elves faction and is an absolute menace when it comes to AoE damage. With his Acid Rain and Disintegrate abilities upgraded, combined with a Lifesteal set, this champion is pretty much unkillable. If you start playing Raid this September, you will get to experience the newest update, where they rebalanced a bunch of the champions, making Arena way more competitive than it was before. And on top of that, the Forge will be added to the game soon, where you will be able to craft some top quality artifacts, saving you a bunch of time by providing more reliable upgrades instead of having to farm and hope for the correct item to drop. If you use the link in the description box to install Raid Shadow Legends in the next 30 days, you will receive a bunch of cool stuff, including gems, silver, and even a new champion. Just make sure to check your inbox after you install the game, and all of the goodies will be waiting for you there. I tried to base my decision for each of the specs on a number of different factors, such as raid utility, damage, uh, the specs history, because specs that have performed really well in the first tiers of past expansions typically tend to perform well in the first tier of like future expansions. Um, that's of course unless they were heavily changed, which some of these specs were, so that might influence the decision there. Let's start at the very top tier, which is the S tier. These specs I believe to be far better than all the other ones and pretty much all of the aspects. So first up, we have Havoc Demon Hunter. There is an argument to be made for Havoc Demon Hunter to be a little bit lower on the list, but for raiding in particular, having one Havoc Demon Hunter is mandatory. And that, in my opinion, makes it S tier. Any spec that is mandatory should be in the highest tier. So Havoc Demon Hunter brings Chaos Brand, which essentially empowers everyone else in the raid. So it's extremely strong. On top of that, it has Darkness, which is a decent cooldown when combined with Spirit Link. Um, they also have decent survivability, even though it has been nerfed heavily from BFA through Blur and Netherwalk. And their damage is still competitive with the other melee specs. So having one Demon Hunter, I believe, makes it an S tier um, class to play. But if you bring any subsequent Demon Hunter, so your second or third DPS Demon Hunter, I would place those probably around the B tier, um, just because you lose out on so much value. There's so many diminishing returns once you have more than one. You don't need more than one for Chaos Brand, and having more than one Darkness typically doesn't help all that much. Uh, so from there, they're pretty much just a DPS bot. So one of S tier, if you bring any more, I believe somewhere in the B tier. The second spec in the S tier, in my opinion, is the Sub Rogue. Now, there is an argument to be made that Assassination could be S tier, but I believe what separates it so much from the other Rogue specs is its damage. Pretty much all the Rogue specs will bring you the same utility. They all have Cloak, they all have Feint, and whichever of the three Rogue specs does the most damage will be in the S tier. Rogues have always done well in past tiers. There's very few raids where Rogues fell out of favor. Uh, in BFA, we saw it a little bit, but even outside of that, I think Rogues will remain one of the kings of melee DPS. And then the third and last spec in the S tier, in my opinion, is the Frost DK. In Shadowlands, there have been a few um, modifications to the Frost DK. We got AMZ back, which on its own will bump Frost DK up this list. So AMZ in raiding is typically very, very strong, even though it's only a 20% DR, 20% uh, magic DR to be specific, on raid encounters, especially towards the end of the raid on the last two, three bosses, um, you need defensives to survive. And any class that brings raid defensives 
is extremely strong. So Frost DK brings AMZ, and on top of it, it also brings really good damage, and it, the damage profile with Breath of Sindragosa is also very favorable for Mythic Raiding. Um, on any bosses where you have adds spawn that need to be nuked down, Frost DK typically excels on because they fit all the damage in the breath window, and then outside of that, they're just kind of cruising along until the next breath window. So this is assuming that breath will be the go-to um, talent build instead of obliteration. But if that ends up being the case, then I believe Frost DKs deserve to be in the S tier. Next, for the A tier. So first class here is the Assassination Rogue. Like I mentioned for Sub Rogue, Whichever one of the rogue specs does more damage will end up being in the S tier. Um, it's kind of hard to judge right now. As it stands on beta, sub rogue deserves to be in S tier, uh, assassination probably A tier, but that can change depending on tuning that they do on heroic week. So it still brings the same utilities as uh, sub rogue. You have cloak, faint, you have shadow step, so good mobility. Um, and outside of that, you have pretty decent multi-dotting, but once it comes to AoE, assassination falls a little bit behind, but that is kind of the same for sub as well. We do have the benefit of funneling damage as a sub rogue, but on pure AoE, it lacks a little bit. So next, we have the Fury Warrior. For Fury Warrior, there could be a case made that they belong in a lower tier just because of their damage. So currently, Fury Warrior is struggling a little bit on the damage front, but on the upside, they still bring the 5% AP buff and they bring Rally. So again, raid utility and raid cooldowns that help you survive usually gain a lot of value on the last 2-3 to three bosses. Early on in the raid, it doesn't matter all that much because those bosses are typically uh, not as difficult. But the later on you get in the raid, the more useful those cooldowns become. So while I put Fury Warrior in the A tier, the same argument could be made as for Sub Rogue and Assassination Rogue. That if Arms Warrior ends up doing way more damage than Fury, then that would put Arms Warrior in this category and drop Fury down. So in my opinion, Fury Warrior is the go-to out of the two Warrior specs currently because Arms just seems to have a lot of design flaws in my opinion. But we'll just have to wait and see until Heroic Week. The third and last class in the A tier, which is a spec that I never would have guessed that I put this high up on my tier list, is the Retribution Paladin. So Red Paladin has been mostly redesigned going to Shadowlands, and the talents that it got make it extremely powerful. So the current meta Retribution Paladin build revolves around stacking a bunch of different cooldowns on top of each other. Uh, they're 45 second or 1 minute cooldowns. And you have an 8 second burst window to do a ton of damage. And then you kind of just play the spec, uh, do the rotation until you set up for the next one. So that type of damage can be really strong in raiding. So assuming that their damage doesn't get nerfed, moving into the first tier, they still bring Sack and Bop, both of which are extremely powerful. Sack can help out in situations where there's a few classes and specs in the game that have a little bit harder time surviving large AoE hits, and typically they require externals. And having Sack on a DPS player frees up some healing externals to be used on the tanks. So having Sack and Bop are great utility tools on top of their already insanely bursty uh, build that they're playing. Now for the B tier. This is where probably the majority of the specs fall. So first, we have the Unholy DK. So the Unholy DK is currently in a very weird design spot. I'm not sure if they're going to make any further changes to it. I really hope they do. But we still bring AMZ as an Unholy DK, so an argument could be made that they belong in A tier. However, I think their damage profile and their current like meta build just doesn't fit too well into Mythic rating. They're decent on single target, and they have strong AoE, but... Mythic Raiding is very rarely about good AoE. Usually you need very good single target um, or very good cleave damage. So as it stands currently, I don't really think Unholy DK will fit into the Raiding meta too well compared to Frost. Now the next three specs, I'm a little surprised that I placed in this tier myself. Uh, typically, uh, when I first thought about them, I would put them in the bottom tier. However, I think that some of the changes that were made to these three specs moving into Shadowlands makes them deserving of a spot in the B tier. First, we have the Feral Druid. So Feral Druid has been 
reworked slash buffed. The changes weren't that massive, but it makes their cooldowns a lot stronger than they were in the past, especially in uh, sync with the Covenant ability. So Feral Druids still bring Stamp Roar, and their damage is a little bit weird. They have a pretty strong burst every three minutes, and then they do kind of steady damage between their burst. And the reason I say that their cooldowns are a little bit weird is simply that they're a three minute cooldown. Having a three minute cooldown is a little bit weird. On some boss encounters, three minute cooldowns are really strong and on others, they're very weak. Um, historically in the past, you would use three minute cooldowns offset from two minute cooldowns like throughout the fight. On pool, everyone would use them, of course. But then from there, three minute cooldowns would allow you to overcome smaller hurdles within a fight where you wouldn't have two minute cooldowns up. So a great example for this was Queen Ashara, for example, where having a pretty diverse mix between three minute and two minute cooldowns was pretty important. On some other raid bosses, having a three minute cooldown is a nuisance and very annoying to play around. So that's why I said that uh, Feral Druids could kind of swing either way. So I'm not exactly sure where they land, but my gut feeling says that they will be pretty decent. Next, we have the Windwalker Monk. So in the first tier of every expansion, Windwalker Monks usually offer some pretty competitive damage with the other melee DPS. They usually don't fall out of favor until later in each expansion because their scaling has been so poor in the past. They have taken some steps to remedy this. I still don't think it's fixed uh, completely, but for the first tier at least, Windwalker Monks should be looking pretty decent. In a recent blue post, Blizzard also hinted at an ongoing effort to fix Storm Earth and Fire. So SEF has been a very troublesome cooldown that Windwalker Monks have had to put up with. Uh, it's had numerous bugs, it's had all the issues that come with like pet damage that Unholy DK suffered from in the past as well. So assuming that they fix SEF and they continue to look at the spec and make sure that it's bug free, because that's one of the biggest issues with Windwalker Monks is that its whole toolkit just had so many bugs that made it very annoying to play with. The issues with Karma and having to take damage to do damage is still not ideal. Um, so I'm not sure where I land on that. I really wish that they changed a little bit about Karma. But even with all those changes, I still think that Windwalker Monks, seeing at least one of in each raid, um, probably won't be that surprising. And on top of that, they do also bring the Mystic Touch. However, uh, you typically have either a Brewmaster or a Mistweaver Monk in the raid to bring you that debuff. However, if those two specs are out of favor or out of the meta for a specific tier, then Windwalker Monk obviously gains a lot of value. And the third spec that I'm surprised I put in this tier is the Enhancement Shaman. So I recently played the Enhancement Shaman and honestly, it's pretty awesome to play. Um, a lot of the, the changes they made to the spec make it feel a lot smoother than it has in the past. They also made a tremendous number of improvements to its cleave and AoE, which is something that Enhancement kind of struggled with in the past. So Enhancement Shaman will bring the Wind Fury Totem, which depending on what comp you bring for the raid might be pretty strong. However, if your melee comp doesn't favor Wind Fury Totem, so melee DPS that have a lot of pets, such as Unholy DKs, for example, have a lot less value from Wind Fury Totem um, compared to classes that gain resources off of auto attacks. So Wind Fury Totem can be pretty decent or it can be almost negligible depending on what other melee DPS you have in the raid. Um, on top of that, they have uh, Wind Rush Totem, which really great for a lot of fights where there's movement and they also have pretty strong cleave damage which they were kind of lacking in the past so i'm really excited to see how enhancement shamans are going to perform in the first tier because they're looking pretty promising and the last spec in the b tier is the outlaw rogue i've debated putting outlaw rogue uh, in b tier or c tier because i'm not entirely sure about them their entire toolkit is designed for Mythic Plus. Having a lot of crowd control, very short cooldowns on your abilities, uh, tons of utility, makes Outlaw Rogues a absolute king in Mythic Plus. But in raiding, a lot of those tools that Outlaw Rogue has go wasted. So that's why I said I'm not sure about Outlaw Rogue. A big issue with Outlaw is its damage profile. Whenever you roll good buffs with Roll the Bones, you will do a ton of damage. 
If you roll bad buffs, you will do mediocre to low damage. And that is kind of an issue in raiding where you want consistent damage. When you have an ad spawn on a boss that needs to die in 30 seconds, and everyone pops their cooldowns on them, you need to know that you're going to output a specific amount of damage. And as an outlaw rogue, that's a roll of the dice, exactly like the ability. Sometimes you will do a ton of damage to that ad, other times you will do almost no damage to it because you got a bad roll. So that's why I really dislike Outlaw Rogue when it comes to raiding. However, if their damage overall, even outside of rolls, is still decent, then they might be in the B tier. However, an argument could be made that they do belong down in the C tier. And then for the lowest tier, it's always hard placing specs in the lowest tier because I don't want to see them there. I want every single class to be B tier or above. But unfortunately, some classes and specs do need to go here. Um, first up, we have the Survival Hunter. The biggest downfall of the Survival Hunter is, of course, that it's a melee DPS. So even among a melee DPS tier list, when you play a class that has a much stronger range spec, or in this case, two much stronger range specs, it's very hard to justify bringing a Survival Hunter. So MM Hunter is looking extremely strong. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about BM Hunter, haven't looked into them too much. But whenever MM Hunter is in the meta, you see basically no Survival Hunters. And since the redesign of the Survival Hunter, which I believe was in Legion, um, there was a single boss where Survival Hunters excelled, and that was on Gul'dan. Outside of that, Survival Hunter has just not performed. And... It's hard to be hopeful for a spec that out of numerous raid tiers, eight raid tiers or even more, hasn't seen a single good one. So I really hope that they make some drastic improvements to this spec because simply bringing some damage to the table at this point is not enough to be considered a melee spec that is worth bringing. And the other class that I placed in C tier is the Arms Warrior. I had a very hard time placing Arms Warrior here because they still bring the raid utility. They have the 5% AP buff and they have Rally. So this means that if your raid has no Warrior at all, bringing at least one of them would probably place Arms Warrior in B tier or above as well. However, especially if your raid already has a Fury Warrior in, which you most likely will do, then Arms Warrior is just hard to justify bringing. I believe that the biggest factor that will determine whether you bring Arms Warriors or Fury Warriors will be their damage. So they're both currently struggling for damage, uh, which means that whichever one of them is on a competitive level with some of the top tier melee will have its place in the A tier. This also means that if Arms Warrior ends up doing more damage than Fury, then Arms Warrior would be in the A tier and Fury Warrior would be in this bottom tier. Um, whenever you have a spec that's beating out the other by a pretty significant margin in damage and they all bring the same utility, it's kind of hard to justify bringing the other one unless they have very varying damage profiles. So what do you think about this tier list? Let me know in the comment section below. There's always heated discussions whenever uh, I make one of these videos because justifiably a lot of these specs um, might belong in a higher or lower tier. It's also very hard to predict where Blizzard will land when it comes to tuning. Uh, today we just got a huge round of Covenant changes, so it seems like they're still making uh, changes to the game itself rather than just looking at tuning particularly. So it's very difficult to actually put together this list and put all the specs in a specific tier uh, because there are arguments for each and every one of these specs that I mentioned to be either in a higher or lower tier than where I placed them. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.